So uh, good afternoon. Maybe a short introduction. So my name is uh, Guillaume. So I'm, I'm VP product of a small company called Xenia. So you know, vice president. That's a good thing about being part of a small company that you you can have uh, uh, big titles. So uh, I'm vice president. I'm very happy to do that. Uh, so uh, Xenia, we are building uh, actually a smart data catalog. So uh, what we're going to to to, to talk about today uh, is um, uh, why you want to to have a, a data catalog in your in your, in your company. Uh, so uh, the point is to uh, leverage your data assets. You know, this is, this is the premise of the new data world that you uh, will turn your company uh, into a data-centric company and data-centric organization where you can use the data to innovate, uh, to build new business, uh, to make better decisions. Uh, and the, the thing is, uh, it's not that easy to uh, turn your company into what uh, is now called a data democracy. Most of the time you have uh, different data cultures uh, and your maturity level in your organization might not be to be a data democracy. What's data democracy? It's a, an organization where uh, many people, everybody hopefully, uh, can actually use the data uh, to make uh, their decisions uh, and to uh, do some analysis, some data science, uh, some decision making, some innovation. Uh, but this data democracy uh, that uh, requires a lot of control on your data because the environment is, uh, is very demanding. You have uh, compliance, uh, you have security issues, so you cannot just uh, ask everybody to, uh, to access the data. So there are different cultures. Hopefully you are not in the data anarchy uh, zone where everybody can access the data, but there's no rule uh, to govern uh, how it can be accessed and used. Uh, and you are probably in uh, one of the other uh, areas which are uh, data aristocracy. Uh, data aristocracy is not so bad. It's probably what's, what happens when you have started a large data arch architecture with data lakes uh, and you have your data scientist, data analyst accessing this data and having quite a good knowledge of what's in there and using it for their expert uh, uh, activities. And then you have uh, probably something which is uh, older, which is what I call data monarchy or data dictatorship which is mostly what you have in the financial reporting on the, on the former BI world where the data access and data, data control is reserved to a small set of people in the, in the organization, mostly uh, the people there in the higher level in the hierarchy. Uh, so uh, this, is, this, is a, this is not that bad a situation, but uh, the problem is that, of course, you cannot leverage your, your data to, uh, to innovate and, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and make more, more uh, global decision making. So uh, uh, data democracy is something you wish, but it's, it's hard to reach it. Um, three, three big problems. The first one is uh, that the knowledge uh, is mostly tribal. Knowledge about the data is usually uh, kept by the people that produce the data or use it directly. Uh, it's very difficult to share and spread in the organization uh, because you have this, this, uh, this high level of expertise that you need to actually understand the data and, uh, and use it. And then you have the mess. Um, most organizations are old organizations. They did not start uh, creating data in the last two years, or in the last 20, 30, 40 years. So you have data everywhere. Uh, and you have layers of storage, layers of systems, uh, more or less siloed. Uh, we started big data projects uh, in, the, in the last few years. Big data project was to remove silos and, and put the data into, uh, into a large lake. Uh, but very often it just created a new kind of uh, mess uh, in, a, in a new place, which is a data lake. So it, it did not remove the mess, it just moved it to a new place and it's more mess. Uh, so you have this mess. And of course you have the compliance, depending on your, uh, on, on your activity, what, what, what you're doing. You have more or less compliance, but you have compliance. Uh, of course, if you are, you are an hospital, you have a lot of compliance. If you are a bank or insurance, you have still uh, quite a lot of compliance, but if you are a general, uh, general purpose organization, you, you, also, uh, you also have compliance, GDPR or some over, uh, over uh, specialized compliance you need to, you need to, to, to make sure uh, you follow in your, uh, in your, uh, with your data usage. Uh, but uh, we know that some organizations uh, manage to be data democracies. So we, we took a few, a few big names, of course you know them, uh, those are all not so old companies, but they are not that new either. And they are all data democracies. They use data everywhere in their decision making. They use data everywhere uh, in, their, in their products, in their uh, innovation. And 
one thing that is uh, that is uh, common to all those companies is that they all have a data catalog. They all started a data catalog a long time ago. Most of them, they actually built it in-house uh, because, of course, they have a, a lot of uh, a lot of resources to, to to do so. But also because they know that the data catalog will be a, a cornerstone to uh, to the data democracy because this is where you will share the information and you will spread it into the organization. Uh, on the other side, uh, we. Well, I've been I've been working on uh, big data projects uh, for probably 16 years, uh, so I've been seeing many different uh, uh, ways to approach this uh, documentation issue. And uh, one of them, probably one of the worst one, uh, was in this insurance company that needed to actually document all its data for compliance compliance reasons. That's not uh, really uh, uh, actually that was for solvability uh, uh, to compliance, and they invested a lot of money to document everything. So we spent months having uh, people documenting everything uh, in their systems, modeling all the data, describing everything. Uh, it was very expensive, took a lot of time. Uh, and at, at the end of the day, uh, the documentation was almost good, but uh, it was not maintainable. So they, they, made, they spent all this money for documentation that actually was actually wrong 12 months later because the systems are moving, data is moving. Uh, and the documentation is uh, is outdated quite quickly. So uh, so back to uh, what we 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 want to achieve is actually to uh, not to take a, a top down approach but a bottom up approach. Start with the truth, and the truth is what what data you have in your actual system, in your operational system, in your storage. Uh, this is where we will start, and we will come uh, scan all this uh, storage, find the data document it uh, and, and share it with, uh, with everybody. Um, so uh, uh, what, what would be a bottom-up approach? Uh, well, it's quite simple, actually. Uh, you have a, a discover phase that is actually uh, automating the discovery of the data sets, data assets in all of your systems, whatever the system is, whatever the storage is, uh, whatever the, the technology uh, you, you are using to store uh, and describe your data. So you have this di discovery. And then you have probably uh, a set of professionals that we, we call data stewards uh, that will be working uh, on making sure that all that has been grabbed in your system uh, is properly documented. Uh, but they won't do it alone, but they, they will be helped by algorithms that will learn uh, what kind of data you're using and will help them document them automatically. And once you've built that, you can open the system to, to uh, business users that will actually use it as a search engine so they can find, uh, locate, and learn how to use uh, different data, but also collaborate uh, to enrich documentation uh, with usage, uh, warnings, uh, and any uh, uh, relevant information that can be uh, shared with other users uh, and, uh, and, they, and they think is valuable. Uh, so that's... that's uh, actually what we've been building at, uh, at, uh, at Zinea. So we, uh, our data catalog has four, uh, four pillars. The first one is that it is an enterprise catalog. It's not just, you, you already have catalogs uh, uh, everywhere today. Uh, in most technologies, you come with the, the catalog. What we have is a catalog that will catalog all your assets, all your storage, not just in your, your data lake, not just in one of your uh, BI system or your warehouse, or, uh, but we, we will document everything uh, everywhere. Uh, it's a connected catalog, so we will really connect your storage. Uh, to scan it, we have, a, we have a set of robots that will uh, grab the data uh, and discover and update all the assets. So you can, you can make sure that your catalog actually reflects what is in your operational systems. Uh, the catalog is smart. Smart, well, it's not too dumb, uh, actually. But uh, the, the idea of, with smartness is that you you want to automate everything. We, we, uh, I come from a technical background. Uh, when you come from a technical background, you know that uh, you don't like writing the documentation. The documentation is always the, 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 the last thing you want to do. So you push it down the, down the backlog and usually uh, you're late and you don't do it. Uh, so we know it's a pain. Uh, it's a pain to create documentation. Uh, so uh, if you want a good documentation, you need to automate it as much as possible and help the people that are in charge of maintaining the documentation 
make sure that it's uh, it's accurate. Uh, so uh, we use algorithm and classical automation to uh, to help the, the the data stewards and the data owners uh, document and maintain the documentation on top of, the, of all the assets. Uh, and of course, it is a, it is a social catalog, meaning that uh, everybody that is using the data can uh, share their entire their knowledge about the data. So you can uh, you can have uh, uh, an even uh, uh, better documentation. Uh, the uh, the another view of the, of the system, a very simple one. So you have all the all the connectors that will go uh, on your storage. Uh, we have listed some of them. We have actually something like. Uh, 40 or 50 uh, connectors to all kinds of technologies can be uh, uh, physical storage, can be warehouse, ETLs, uh, APIs, any kind of any place you find assets that are available uh, that you want to that you want to catalog to uh, people find them. So we connect to all this uh, all these sources. Uh, we grab all the meta information, and we have this algorithm and automation that will populate the properties or uh, notify the data stewards. Uh, but there is something that is uh, weird in the documentation, or that is uh, uh, that is uh, that require their attention, uh, so they can they can actually check it and uh, and make sure that the the information is correct. Um, and of course, in the in the middle of the system is a is a search engine that will be uh, used by uh, by end users uh, to find uh, to find the asset, not only the asset but all the information about the asset, and especially the information about how to use it if there is some uh, compliance or ethical uh, uh, restriction, security uh, security uh, restriction that uh, they, they need to comply to before they can use this uh, this data. Um, a little bit more about the the smart part. Uh, so most most of the most of the smartness relies on what we call data fingerprinting. So what we do is that we actually when while we scan the the, the data storage, we also scan the data so we can compute uh, a set of features on top of the, of the data. So we can build a, what we call a fingerprint. Uh, so that's, that's more as data science on top of the data sets. So we have uh, 30 or 35 uh, computation that we, that we make on the data. So we have a fingerprint. Uh, and with this fingerprint, uh, we, can, uh, we can use a deep learning algorithm to uh, learn about the data. What's his meaning? Uh, we can relate uh, uh, some data sets to others uh, in your system, uh, detect links, detect duplicates, suggest documentation. So if you have some data that has already been documented, we can suggest that if we find another data set with the same fingerprint, we can suggest that it's probably the same information or the same kind of information and help the data steward uh, uh, link the, this information to, to the right documentation. Uh, we also use even based automation because of course uh, you can you have these smart algorithms, but you also have some dumb algorithm that is just applying rules to document uh, the information based on your internal uh, standards so that 's something we can just do by uh, by creating scripts uh, and when you when you detect a data set, use its structure uh, to or its location or any information that is that is already uh, uh, present to to build the documentation based on your internal rules. Uh, and of course, we will uh, suggest for the end user. Uh, we will use uh, several uh, several techniques to to make it easier to use uh, the catalogs. We have something we call the adaptive search engine. That means that uh, we the, the the engine will learn uh, what a user expects from the system. We we'll try to fine tune the results of the search uh, to his profile. So this is this is something that is similar to what is, what Amazon is using. In their uh, own catalog, so they can suggest you what you 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 are the most uh, 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 aware of or you most like. So this is this is a, a more or less same story. We we are using the same kind of technology to uh, to try to improve the search results to to fit the the, the user profile. Uh, and of course, uh, recommendation and uh, a simple simple user interface to uh, to make it easy to use for the. For the the, the 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 end users. Uh, 